640306 uh, greater than Solomon is here now. Dallas, Texas, USA. Let us remain standing just for a moment while we read the word of the Lord. You would like to turn to the scripture reading tonight, turn to Matthew 12, beginning with the 38th verse. And there, then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would seek a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and an adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall be no sign be given unto it but the son of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in the judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. The queen of the south shall rise in the judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it, for she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Let us bow our heads with our heads and hearts bowed in his presence. Is there a request in here tonight that you would like to be remembered in prayer? If so, just raise your hands and signify by that. God, hear my request. Now pray silently while we go to prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are deeming this one of the most grandest privileges that we have at this side of glory is to meet in the congregation of the people who believe in you. That where we can expect your presence, because it's according to your promise. You said where there are two or three gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. And if they can agree upon any certain thing and ask, they shall receive it. Lord, the greatest thing that we could agree upon tonight, that you would just meet with us, that we might behold your presence, sense it in our spirits, and know that you are here, and in your presence we feel that we can pour out our hearts in supplication, and as we meditate upon thee, may we feel this great sense of the answer of our prayers, as we are asking now in Jesus Christ's name, Amen, you may be seated. I want to take the subject, the Lord willing, with some scriptures I have written out here for just a few moments before we go to prayer for the sick upon the subject of a greater than Solomon is here now. We find in our beginning of the scripture tonight where our text is found that Jesus was deputing with the Pharisees. He was rebuking them because that they had not understood him, a man not that the theologians that had been trained looking forward for the time of his appearing, and then when he arrived, they misunderstood him, and had called him a devil. They said that the ministry he had was of the devil, because he could design the thoughts that were in their hearts, and by this they thought him to be some kind of a witch doctor, or some kind of a fortune teller, and anyone knows that it was spirits. And then to call the work of God an evil spirit was blasphemy. And he had told them he would forgive them for it, because the Holy Spirit had not come as yet to tender up their hearts and to make them in condition so that they would understand God. They were hearts was far away from God. All they knew was called theology of the law. They had not yet received the Holy Spirit. But he said, when the Holy Spirit has come and does the same thing to speak against that it's never forgiven in this world nor in the world to come. And I was reading as I was reading this this afternoon and meditating upon it of how that they, one of them here, come to him in a roundabout way and ask him, said, Master, we would see a sign from thee. In other words, the Jews were always taught to believe signs. The Jews seek signs always and the Greeks wisdom. And we find that these Jews was relying upon a sign. Now, what a very witness against his Pharisee that him supposedly knowing the scripture that the sight of the Messiah, Jesus had already performed it, and his eyes were so darkened that he didn't recognize it. Jesus had Jesus had given him the true scriptural messianic sign that was promised in the scripture. But he was looking for some other kind of a sign. And how true that stands the teachers of today and people of today, they can see something that is solid and in the scripture promised by God for the day. And then they can see that, but yet they are looking forward to something. They want to see something else and not taking the sign of the time. He told them once, said, you can design the skies when it's lowering red. You'll see when it's lowering and red tomorrow, 
will be a fall weather and so forth. But said you can discern the signs of the skies, but the signs of the time you don't understand. For truly the scripture had said that this Messiah will be a prophet. We know that God's way of doing things was always sending a prophet to vindicate his message. Never has failed, never will fail. God cannot change his way. What his first decision is, it must ever remain that way. What he says is true. God never did deal in great groups. He always deals with an individual. That's how he has taken a people out of the Gentiles for his name. Just an individual, one here and there. For his name, he deals with an individual, not by groups. And we find that the reason they believed this, that a prophet must be an identified witness of God, for when he said anything, and he come to pass, and he said again, and he come to pass, and whatever he said, God vindicated it to be true. Then he said, Fear him, for I am with him. Now we find that Moses, who they claimed to believe in, had told them that, The Lord your God shall raise up a prophet, like unto me. To him the people must hear. And all that didn't believe this prophet would be cut off from the people. We find that to be true. He came to his own, his own received him not. But as many as did receive him, to them gave him the power, gave them the power to become sons of God. How we find these Pharisees looking right and Sadducees upon exactly what the promise of God said that he would do. And there they were still seeking a sign, not knowing that that was a true messianic sign that he was to give. Philip understood it. When he told him where he was the day before, he understood that that was a messiah. Said thou art the Christ, the King of Israel. And so he recognized that because he was given to that he was. Jesus said, no man can come to me except my father draws him. And all the Father has given me will come to me. No matter how much we try to get in any other way, it's got to be God. It's not him that willeth or him that runneth. It's God that showeth mercy. God is the one that does the choosing. You haven't chose me, said Jesus. I chose you. And now we find that the Antichrist in the last day will deceive all that dwells upon the earth who names are not written in the Lamb's book of life from the foundation of the world. Your name was put in God's book before the Lamb was slain. When his program was laid out, the whole thing, you are recognized in that program because you got eternal life. The word eternal never did begin and neither can it end. And you are an attribute of God's thinking before the world was ever created. That's the only way you can have eternal life. And that life that he was thinking of you is in you now. There is no way to separate it. It's in there to stay. Notice now, these Pharisees, yet being religious teachers, great scholars of theology, and studied the book day and night, failed to see that messianic sign, and was here trying to ask him for a sign, that I might further the thing to let you know that God always gives signs, because he is supernatural. He always deals with people through signs, scriptural signs. In the Old Testament, when they had a question, someone dreamed a dream, and there was no prophet there. They took him down to the temple, where they had what they call the Eurymethemim. You be able teachers understand what I mean. It was a breastplate that Aaron wore, that had the 12 stones that represented the 12 tribes of Israel. They hung that up on a post, and then when this prophet or this dreamer whatever it was, told his vision or his dream, regardless of how real it seemed in them, supernatural lights didn't come up, making the Yerim on that breastplate, it was rejected. God refused it. There must be a supernatural sign from God to vindicate, no matter how real, how deep it was in theology, how great it sounded, it's still, if God's supernatural sign didn't vindicate it, it wasn't so to the Jew. Now, the Old Testament the Aaron's plate was done away with the Old Testament. But in the New Covenant, God still remains with the Yerimim Thummim. That is, if a prophet, dreamer, theologian, whatever it is, speaks something that's contrary to this word, and God doesn't echo it back through the word, let it add it alone. For it's God, Yerimim Thummim, and I believe it with all my heart. And it's God's word. And God is his own word. In the beginning was a word. The word was with God and the word was God. 
and the Lord was made flesh and dwelt among us. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. <coughs> he is still. God don't need any interpreter. We interpret. We see this, that, this is that, and this is that, and so forth. God don't need an interpreter. He is his own interpreter. God doesn't need us to interpret his word. The Bible is written and it said it's of no private interpretation. God said in the beginning, let there be light. And there was light. That's the interpretation of it. God said a virgin shall conceive, and she did. That's the interpretation of it. He doesn't need anybody to interpret. God said in this day, these things would happen, and they are. You don't need any interpretation. It's God doing his own interpretation. It happens. No matter how much we try to twist it and say it don't mean this and don't mean that, it only means exactly, and God is his own interpreter. He vindicates his word, and that's his interpretation of it because it's brought to pass. Now we find these fellows there in Matthew the 12th chapter, 38th to 40th verse, and they were asking him, Master, we would seek a sign from thee. And he was upbraiding them because they had not believed him and had called the very spirit that was upon him an evil spirit in their unbelief because that they couldn't identify him among their clergymen. They couldn't identify his where he come from. They didn't know what school he come from, whether he was a Pharisee or a Sadducee and was constantly trying to tear down the institution of theology and calling them a bunch of snakes, and why? They couldn't identify him anywhere. And so, where did this man come from? We do not know whence he is. And they didn't realize the very sign that he was a Messiah was there. Now, like the little woman at the well we spoke of last night, night before last, she recognized it, and he did something for her. And those who recognized it, they were the seed of God that was to be called in that day. God and always in all times has always give spiritual gifts to his people. That's how he is identified and known by spiritual gifts. And when God sends a spiritual gift to his people and that spiritual gift is rejected, then that people goes into the darkness of a chaos every time through the ages when God sends something to the people, a gift, and they turn it down, that people is rejected by God because it's rejected God's mercy. Oh, what a safety it would be tonight. How much greater it would be than all the bomb shelters and all the places we could think of if this nation, which is called a Christian nation, could accept the gift of God that's been given to it, the great Holy Spirit poured out in these last days, and how that if this nation would accept that, it would be more safety <coughs> <coughs> And anything they could get into, but they turned it down. So there is nothing left but chaos and judgment. All ages, he gave these great spiritual gifts. And notice always the coming of a spiritual gift, a true gift, and to speak one night on the voice of the gift. But if the Lord willing, but always these gifts are usually announced by prophets. And then when you see a prophet rise on the scene, it shows that judgment is at hand. Now it's a sign. When you see identified the prophet of God rise on the scene in the days of Jeremiah, in the days of Daniel, in the days of John the Baptist, in the days of the Lord Jesus, and all down through, when a prophet rises on the scene, it's time that God is going to speak his word. The nations reject it, and then chaos sets in. And that's the way it was in the changing of the church ages each time. When the message is rejected, and God giving these gifts and messages to the people, and they turn them down, then there is nothing left but judgment. God is just. He will not send judgment before he offers mercy. And mercy is foretold and how it will come, but the people usually is so all mixed up and in their minds, and so many different man-made schemes, till they don't recognize it. And that's the way it always happens now. We find that he told them that a wicked and an adulterous generation seeks after signs. How many times an believer has taken advantage of this? 
about scriptural signs and don't believe it. God always speaks with signs. He forever has, he forever will, as long as there is a world, he will speak by spiritual signs. He has foretold they would come. Now, many of the unbelievers take that when he said a wicked and or a weak and adulterous generation seeks after signs what? He was speaking in a compound prophecy here. He was also telling them that they were a weak and adulterous generation and also telling them that any weak and adulterous generation and one that would come will receive a sign. Notice he said, a weak and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall be no sign given to it but the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days and nights, so must the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and nights. What was he saying here? He was saying that a wicked and adulterous generation would receive the sign of the resurrection. And what other age have we ever come to any more than it is right now? To a Christ-rejecting, wicked, perverted, adulterous generation, and they will receive a sign, the sign of the resurrection, that Jesus Christ is alive tonight just as much as he ever was. He has raised from the dead, making him the same yesterday, today, and forever. A weak and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and they'll get it, and the sign will be the sign of the resurrection. Now, of course, he was speaking to them that he would raise up from the dead. Many times, scripture has its common or its compound meaning. Like in Matthew 3, it said that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. Now, if you refer that back, it's to Hosea. And he prophesied that out of Egypt he called God's son, which was Israel. Jacob was God's son, and he called him out of Egypt. That's where the reference runs you to. But also Christ was his greater son, and he called him out, Israel being a type. And so that being a type of rejecting Christ in that generation, that is a greater type for that generation that rejected the resurrection had pardoned. But this generation who makes fun of the Holy Ghost is impardonable. We are greater is he that rejects the Holy Spirit than he that rejects Jesus Christ in the days of his flesh on the earth. Jesus said so. You speak against the Son of Man. When they said he was a fucking teller or some evil spirit, said, You speak against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven you. But whoever speaks a word against the Holy Ghost shall never be forgiven. Them in this world that is called the working of the Holy Ghost an evil and clean thing. When they see the work of God being done, yes, Jonah was a witness of the resurrection as he was in the belly of the wheel for three days and nights. Many people try to condemn Jonah. And say that, oh, he, everybody, he was a Jonah. Jonah was a prophet. He was walking exactly in the will of God. When he took that wrong ship and got out there, that had it to be done. It must be that way to show forth the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He had to play that. Just the same as Hagaha was put out, that the free woman would not be heir with the bondswoman. These things had to happen. There were shadows and types of the things to come. Now we find out he comes down then after speaking of Jonah and he comes to Solomon's age. Now we all know that Solomon's age was a millennium almost of the Old Testament. It was the greatest time of all Israel ever had was under the reign of Solomon. No was to speak of and had a great time. God gave Solomon, which was son of David, gave him a gift of discernment and now he could discern the thoughts in the people's heart. Now, how that Hebrew standing there ought to have recognized that Solomon had a gift of discernment and he could discern the thoughts in their heart and they all rallied around Solomon and yet he stood a greater than Solomon and Solomon was a son of David but he was the lesser son of David by the flesh and Jesus was the son of David by seed of the promise, the royal seed. And here was a greater than Solomon standing there doing the same thing as Solomon done only being a greater than Solomon, and they call it Beelzebub. You see the interpretation of the scripture? No wonder he said what he did. A wicked and adulterous generation will seek after a sign, and they'll get it, the sign of the resurrection. And in Solomon's age, there was a great revival on. I'll kind of give it in illustration so the young can understand it. There was a great revival that was going on in the days of Solomon. God gave a gift 
and the whole nation rallied around it. Everybody come to it. They believed in it wholeheartedly. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing if it happened among us, the people tonight? If all America, all people that call themselves Christians will rally around God's gift in these last days, the pouring out of the Holy Ghost upon the people, that's God's gift in this last day. He's the Holy Spirit, Christ in the form of spirit. <laughs> he is here with us now. Wouldn't it be wonderful if all the churches that profess to be Christians would rally around this great gift that God has given us? Why is it they've got it off in all kinds of isms and creeds and dogmas and you can't tell what is what? It's exactly the way they've always done it, but God promised it to be straightened out to the seed anyhow at the end time. Now, notice in this, we find that all of them rallied around that great gift, and Israel blossomed like never before. All nations feared Israel. They were afraid to come over there because they know that God was with them. And I will tell you, you talk about shutting up communism and everything, just let America come back to God, back to her gift, back to the Holy Ghost, and people will have to quit hollering about communism. It's so warm seated in until even communists has anti-communist setups to find out who they are. The thing has to be that way, but let them come back. Here not long ago in Finland, Brother Lindsay, I believe, he was here last night. He was with me when it happened. A little boy that I had seen in a vision here was raised up from the dead. Over there, many of you, I guess, still have it wrote in your Bible as a cross in nation saying what he would look like, where he would be, and so forth. And he was raised up from the dead according to the word of the Lord. He had been killed by an automobile accident. Many of you remember the case. And standing there when he was raised up from the dead, that night going down to the Mesa Heli, Brother Lindsay and I and Brother Moore and many of the men trying to get down to the Mesa Holy, where they let so many thousand, let me speak to them, then turn them out and speak to more on the road down. They had four or five city blocks, was all blocked off. People was in the streets to watch us coming in and going out. And in there, there had been a little girl on crutches, one leg shorter than the other one, been healed, and many things had been done. When this little boy being raised up, it went on news. They don't have rock and roll and stuff in Finland, or they didn't then. There was only news and things was worthwhile. They had on radio, and that had went all the way down into Russia. If you live in Russia, and 40 miles from your home, your birthplace, you've got to have a visa to share business. And the Iron Curtain was right. We walked right down to it, where the machine guns were sitting in the street, just out of Kuapio. And that night, this news had went down, and the streets were piled by thousands times thousands of Russians. Here was those communistic soldiers, Russian soldiers, those little round caps on, and six little Finnish boys. Right after that war, they had never been old enough to shave it, yet were slick-faced boys, big, big old boots on, big long coats, walking down the street with these sabers and things watching so I could get through the crowd to get in. Here stood those Russians standing there. When I come by, they come to attention, hold like that, and the tears running down their cheeks, and when I passed by, they grabbed them Finnish soldiers and pat them on the back and hug them. Anything that would make a Russian part of Finn or settle wars, they said, this we will receive a God that can raise up the dead. That's what's the matter tonight, friend, exactly. What made them communistic is because the clergy has let down on the word of God. They all taken all the money and they have nothing to give back in the stead, just like a lodge or anything else. That's what is wrong with the world. Then we find that in the days of Solomon, they were all rallying around this great gift that Solomon had from the Lord. And the people were coming and going, all the nations feared Israel. Instead of trying to make war with them, they brought in peace offerings. They were not afraid so much of their man. They were afraid of that God that they were all in unity with. Oh, <clears throat> what a thing that would be 
this nation tonight if we'd be in fear of God, if we'd have all respect to God and receive his gift of the Holy Ghost and rally around it, every church breaks down their creeds and throw them out of the door and get down to the altar and stay till the Holy Ghost come to identify his word in the last day. Some of them trying to say why is just for the Jews to get it. That's all they are was to eat. Peter said in the day of Pentecost, repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you and your children, to them that's far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. As long as there's a seed waiting in the earth to be called, there is a Holy Ghost to call it to it. That's right, it's still just the same. But we find out when it comes, it's rejected. That's the reason the nations comes under condemnation. That's the reason things are going the way they are tonight. And we find in Solomon's time, it wasn't so. All of them rallied around that gift of discernment that Solomon had. And the nations all feared God. And news spread out everywhere. Oh, you should come to Israel. Their God has raised up a gift among them. And they've made him a king. And his wisdom, his discernment is beyond human reckoning. <coughs> Recognition, it's beyond. It's in the realms of God out in there, the heathen would say. And we don't understand how it is. But God, their God, has represented himself in one of the believers. And he, they've set him up on the throne. And they all listen to him, you know. The news scattered then, not by television, telephone, and so forth. It was leaped by ear. Finally, the news broke plumb down across the Sahara, Sahara Desert, all the way into a little country called Sheba. They had, it was a hidden country, they had a little queen down there, was no doubt a nice little lady, and the news came to her that God was giving a great revival up there in the land of Israel, and great things were taking place, and they had a man up there anointed with the spirit of their God, that even his wisdom surpassed anything that man could think of. You know, faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word of God. That stirred her little heart, she began to think about it, and now... As every caravan came by, no doubt the little queen would send out her soldiers and say, I would like to speak to the person in private if they have come from Israel. Yes, queen, we have been up in Israel, and oh, it is marvelous. You should see it. There is nothing like it. It's beyond man's understanding. You know, all of them are in one accord. Every one of them is right around that gift that their God has given them. And they all believe it with one accord. Oh, it's the most greatest thing. And there is nothing withheld. God just reveals everything. If any nation would start over there on them, why? The God of theirs would reveal where they was coming. And they ambush them before they got there. Oh, it was just a great revival going on. And then, you know, the little queen began to get hungry to see it herself. You know, there's something about it. Man knows that he come from somewhere and he is here. He don't know why he's here and is going somewhere and he doesn't know where he's going. And there's only one book in the world that tells us who you are, where you come from, what you are, and where you're going. And that's the Bible. It's the only one that tells you and it's God's book. It's God himself manifested in word form called a seed. That seed in the right kind of a ground will produce every promise that he made because it's God himself. It has to be watered by faith to make it come to pass like any other seed. The germ is in it. Nude. Notice now, we find that in this doing, the little queen begin to hunger and thirst for God. Oh, if the gifts of God could only create a thirst in the people's heart for him, like he did to her. Now we find out so that the children, little fellows, there is in a whole row of them sitting here in different places that they may understand. We'll give it in a kind of a drama for them so they'll understand. Now remember, she was a pagan. So in order to do this, and being a queen, she would have to get permission from a pagan priest in order to go. And I can imagine seeing her go over to him and make her bows and say, Great Holy Father, so and so, 
we know the Israelites has got a revival up there, and their God has represented himself in the form of a man by a great gift, and he knows the secrets of their heart. And they tell me that he is a word, and the word is a designer of the thoughts of the heart, and they say it's operating in a man. I would like your permission, most holy father, to go up there and to visit and see for myself. Well, I can imagine her answering, answer coming back, we don't have any cooperation in that revival, or that's the 1964 version of it. But anyhow, you'd see they don't belong to a denomination, they are not of our people. We have nothing to do into it at all. You should not go. And they're nothing but a bunch of cranks. They hear all kinds of rumors about them coming through a Red Sea and all kind of stuff, but there's nothing about it. Here is our great God. See him standing on the side of the wall. They were so and so, and so many times they've done so and so. The little queen went away disgusted. But you know, there's something about it. If God begins to put a hunger in a human heart, there's just nothing going to stand in its way. Whether there is cooperation or not, or whether there's anything she has got to find that. I like, <clears throat> I said, about the little woman last night, being persistent and perseverant, see, something gets a hold of you, and you get a hold of something, like Jacob, the son of God, Jacob, God's son, got a hold of something one night, and he got a hold of him, and he never let it go until he achieved his purpose, blessed of it. That's that's the real thing. And when man impersonates <coughs> something, it never works out right. But if you can get a hold of that something, and that something get a hold of you, it's going to happen. If you come here tonight for healing, and let the Holy Spirit get a hold of you, and you get a hold of it, you are going to get what you ask for. There is no way of keeping you from it. You can't believe in that Jesus Christ saves, and there the saving power gets a hold of you, and you get a hold to it, you are going to get saved. If you believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you, and he'll baptize you, you'll get a hold of him, you won't have to move from your seat. He will fill you with his presence right there where you are, just as he did. While Peter yet speak this words, the Holy Ghost fell on them that heard it. Something got a hold. Something got a hold of that little Syrophoenician woman we spoke of last night. No matter how many hindrances she had, she still was going anyhow. Something got a hold of this little queen we're talking about tonight, a pagan, a heathen. So was this little Syrophoenician a Greek, a pagan, a worshipper, but something got a hold of them, and they got a hold of something. There is always difficulty in the way. Satan throws everything in the way he can. When he sees a real move of God get started, he'll do it to you. He'll put everything, all the hindrances he can in your way. Remember, the woman had a lot of hindrance, but her faith didn't have any. Faith has no hindrance. There is nothing going to stop it, no matter what anybody says. If you've got that right hold on God, God has got the right hold on you. <coughs> there can be 40 doctors standing here telling you he was dying, and you wouldn't believe one out of it. No, sir. No, sir. There could be 40 clergymen standing here, like Ahab's 400, with stand. If you are Micaiah and got a hold of God, God has got a hold of you. And you see it vindicated in the word, there is nothing going to stop you. You're going to stand there anyhow, because something has got a hold of you. It's revealed to that little woman that there was a God somewhere. I can see her go read those Hebrew scrolls again, roll them up and put them down in the jar, and walk back to that pagan priest and say, I want to tell you something, Holy Father. It might be so, the things you are saying, but look, my grandmother worshipped that idol. She read that catechism you got. My great-grandmother read it. My mother read it. All my people read it. It's all about something that did happen. I've never seen a move of it yet, but they tell me they got something up there that's real, moving right now, not some history, but something that's now going on. Look, now look at here. He would say, my child, if you go, I'll excommunicate you. And you have no business as a queen associating yourself with such a people as that. 
the same old devil still lives. There is no better crowd in the world to get into than a born-again church filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't care where it's at, if it's in the alley or wherever it is, it's the best crowd. It's a heavenly group. Notice, believers who believe in God. Her heart was thumping heavy with anticipation. She wanted to see. She had heard about it. She knew nothing about it, but she wanted to see it. And I can hear her say, well, you can just take my name off the book if you want to. Whatever you see, and them idols and them books and things I see you keep telling about something, telling about something is never moved. I've never seen a move of it yet. I want something that's real. And she gets ready to go. Too bad we ain't got more of them little queens today, right? So then we find out that now in order to go, she used a very good tactic. I would like for everybody to think of this now. She said she didn't know. She had read all the scrolls to find out what Jehovah was, to see the way he had worked in the days gone by. If that be so, then he would identify himself with this man as they said he was. Then that was Jehovah. And if it was Jehovah and he was the true God, the God of the living, not some statue or monument of some creature that lived or didn't live, this was a living, present God right now. So she wanted to get ready to go. Now, she said she packed up a lot of money. She took gold and myrrh and, oh, frankincense, I suppose, and silver. And she had little camels with it. <clears throat> now she said this, I'm going up, I'm going to look into it myself, and then if it's so, I'll support it. If it isn't so, I'll have nothing to do with it. You know, she could teach me to cost or something. A lot of them support a program that laughs and makes fun of you, and you support a program on air that makes fun of the things you believe in. And that's right, yes, sir, because it sounds right, sure. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, Jesus said. But notice how she said, If it isn't, then I can bring my gifts back. But she was going to see for herself and be convicted. She had read the scrolls, she knew what Jehovah was, and she would sing, If he was, he is, then he is still Jehovah. And that's good today. Jesus Christ is what he was, and he always will be. He never changes. The Bible said he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We find that little woman then talk about hindrances. Then this might have come through her mind. Remember, I've got to cross a desert, and that's a very long trip. Measure it from Israel, from Palestine, down into Sheba, across the Sahara Desert. It will take a camel about, I think, the caravans taking them 90 days, three months traveling constantly to go from one place to the other. Three days, three months to go. And just think, she come across a hot desert. She had that in her mind. She had to do it across a hot desert all the way up here to find out if this truly was God. No wonder Jesus said she will stand with this generation and condemn it. She didn't have an air conditioned catalog. And some people here in Dallas won't come across the street to hear it. That's right. No wonder she'll stand in the last days, but stand over some and criticize it. Anywhere else they do it, said she'll come from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the rhythm of Solomon, and a greater than Solomon is here. Notice she had that to confront her. She probably had to travel by night so hot on the desert. The direct rays of the sun upon that Sahara Desert will take the hide right off of you. And there she had to travel maybe by night. Another thing, remember she was loaded down with offerings and things. The sons of Ishmael were fleet horsemen. They were robbers in the desert. How easy it would have been for Ishmael's children to come in like a flood and cut them two or three little eunuchs she had with her. A little group of soldiers, eunuchs, and little maids cut them down and left them lay there and packed off tens of thousands times thousands of dollars of jewels besides the costly frankincense and myrrh and stuff that she was bringing for a gift. But there is something about it. 
if your heart is set to see God and something has got a hold of you, you don't know a, no danger. You don't know no defeat. There is something you're going to get it some anyhow, no matter what the difficulty is. Sure, it looked like a very setup for the robbers. Any of them could have come, but she didn't take the thought of any danger. She didn't take the thought whether she could get up and walk like somebody afraid to rise from a bed or a court or something or other. I don't know, sing. I'm afraid to do it. She didn't have that kind of a fear. Something had a hold of her. And if something can get a hold of us in the same manner, something is going to take place. Now, you can't do it until that gets a hold of you. You had better not try it. But when that's a hold of you, is going to happen. Notice here she is. She never thought of how many robbers there was in the desert. Or again, when she got up there, would she be deceived or not? She was of another denomination, you know. So would she be deceived? Would she be welcome at the meeting? She wasn't asked to come. Holy Spirit worked on her to come. So he was the one doing the leading. So to satisfy that feeling that she had, that she longed to not remember, it's your life. It was her life. You have only got one time to settle it. And maybe tonight is your last opportunity. You turn Christ down tonight, you may not have another opportunity. And that might have been her last opportunity. She realized that was her cold form religion she had, all right. Or was there truly a living God? She had seen nothing in her own religion, but she had heard there was something in the other one. She had read of what it was she wanted to see. It was her life was at stake. It's my life tonight. I have to face this. I have to come to the judgment. So do you have to come to the judgment. It behooves us to sit in our seats, lay on our beds, whatever we are, and consider this thing deeply because you don't know what time your card is going to be taken out of God's rock up there and you'll answer the judgment whether you are a church member or whether you are not. That has nothing to do with it. You're going to answer anyhow and you better be dead sure of it. Check your experience with God. See if something really has got a hold of you that brings you back to this word away from creeds and forms and so forth, he promised it in the last days there would be a turning again of the hearts of the children to the fathers, and we believe that. Notice, we find it in this day now, and she take no thought of fear or anything was to bother her. She wasn't thinking about that. The idea was she wanted to find out if it was real or not. So across the day that she went, and note, she had a hard time doing it anyhow that you have. That's the trouble. We Pentecostals, we just got everything handed to us on a platter. Everything we want. The pastor don't come just on time. I leave the assemblies and join the church of God. And you know, it's just, we just so baby around. Remember, me, there was an old salt one time coming from the sea and a poet went down had never seen the sea. He had wrote about it, but never seen it. The old salt met him. He said, Where goest thou, my good man? He said, I'm going to the sea. I'm a poet. I have a root of the sea. I have longed to smell the brain and see its great brainy waves leaping around the girls are singing and blue sky reflecting itself in the sea. The old salt puffed his pipe four or five times looked down and spit, said I was born on it seventy years ago. I don't see nothing also to about it. He had lived on it so long till it become common. That's what it is with us tonight. We lived in the presence of God so long till it's become common to us. We ought to wake ourselves up and realize that Jesus Christ is alive and has raised from the dead. This was all to be a new experience for this little queen. She was persistent. She wanted to see it, certainly. She was persistent. She had to persist to leave her nation. She had all of her prestige. She had to leave behind. What of all of her card society and all she belonged to? 
all the stitch and sew circles and things that she belonged to as a queen, all the celebrity that she knew. She would have to be a laughing stock to that group. But what difference did it make to her? It was her soul. It's your soul. It's my soul. What difference does it to make to the Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, or oneness, twoness, threeness, or whatever it is? It's my soul that's concerned. It's your soul that's concerned. It's God's word that's been vindicated. We find her. She didn't make any difference to her. What anybody said or what her celebrity, what her friends, if she had to leave everything there was in the world, if it was real, she was ready to go do it. She would give her kingdom anything else if it was real. She wanted to find God. There was something in her heart. We find out across the desert she came. Finally, day after day, 90 days, three months, a caravan finally arrived at the gate. Now, she never come like a lot of people do in the meetings today. Many of them come and they'll say, ah, I hear they got, ah, somebody told me they had, aha, uh -huh. well, I'll go over and they'll sit down just a moment, watch them, you see them everywhere. They'll say the first word he says that's contrary to my belief, out the door they're gone. I'll never go back to hear another one again, see? They just don't sit long enough, that's it. What about when Jesus, when he was sitting before his 70 there, and had 70, and had the whole multitude, he was a great man, he was a prophet, they said, the Galilean prophet. One day he looked upon that great crowd standing around him, he said, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Could you imagine the physicians sitting out there, what they said about that man, why? He will make vampires out of hearts, drink his blood and eat his flesh. He never explained it. He didn't have to explain it. He had to shake off the parasites that was around him. Instead of trying to baby and put their name on a poop, he was shaking them away. He had no reuse for them. So we find out there he was, he said, except. He never explained it. Watch. Those disciples sat still. They never said nothing. I see the doctor and see the Pharisees said, see, the man is out of his mind, he's crazy, he wants to cut up his body now and eat it and drink his blood, human vampire, well, we couldn't do a thing like that, oh, that's crazy, the man is out of his mind, walked away. Then he looked around to those theologians sitting around him, them 70, and he said, what will you say when you see the Son of Man ascending up into heaven from whence he came? Them doctors of divinity looked around, said the Son of Man ascend up into heaven from where he came. Why? We know him. We have been to the stable where he is born. We seen the cradle he was rocked in. We know his mother. We. He fishes with us. He hunts with us. He is out here on the hills. He wears the clothes that we do, eat the food. And this son of man, where did he come from? He came from Nazareth. This is too much for us. Away they went. He still didn't explain it, seeing. He looked and he looked around to the twelve, said, where will you go also? Now, they couldn't explain it either. She, but something had a hold of them. See, they knew. That's when Peter said those memorial words, Lord, we have seen the scripture are vindicated by you. Where would we go? We know that thou as the words of life, thou art the fountain of life. We are satisfied of this. Jesus said, I chose you twelve of you, and one of you is a devil, see. He had no bones, and polishing, and babying, and pat them on the back, and baptize them secretly, or something or another. He was God made flesh on earth. He was a vindicated word of God, and those who hungered come. Those who did not hunger could not come, said, All the Father has given me will come. How can you come then unless he has given, been given? Now notice we find this little queen. She finally arrived. She didn't wait just like those people did. Some of them followed her along. There is always three classes of people. Believers, make believers and unbelievers. The unbeliever will get up and walk away. The make believer will stand around for a long time. There, all three of them was the unbeliever, the crowd, the make believer, the group that turned away last. But there was a genuine believer 
who could not explain it. They knew nothing about it, but they knew that he was a word that settled it. There we find the little queen. She had brought a whole lot of food, many pieces of bread, and a lot of stuff. She brought her tents and things. She threw her things off of the camels and things out in the yard, the cost of the people, and she pitched her tents and was there to stay till she was convinced whether it was right or wrong. No doubt, day by day, she had read those scriptures. Nighttime, they probably had to travel by night. In daytime, then she would sit back under those palm trees in the oasis of, in the desert and read what Jehovah was, what he was supposed to be. Now, she would know Jehovah. If he was in that man, she would know his action. She would know whether it was right or not. So she was all posted in the scripture. She didn't go there and say, Now, if he says anything different from what my priest says, I'll just pick up my camels and go away. She was going to stay till she was convinced. Oh, <clears throat> if men and women would only do that today, Take the scripture, see if the Holy Spirit is for today or not. See if these things we are talking about are predicted for this hour that we are in. But she did. That's the reason Jesus said her name is infallible. Not infallible, but it's immortal. She will stand in the day of judgment and condemn Alex, Texas. She will condemn the United States in the day of the judgment. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. The resurrected Jesus Christ is here in the power of his resurrection. Notice, and she pitched her tents. I can imagine that morning, for the children sick now, the bells rang, the trumpets sounded, and church was on. They had church every day. Think of it. They loved to go to church every day. So they, church started. I imagine the little queen went way back in the back and sat down. And after a while, all the trumpets sounded, the hymns were sung and everything. After a while, Pastor Solomon came out, sat down. How all the people regarded him because they loved him. He was God's servant. And they come out, there wasn't one saying, huh? If he was just this, if he just belonged to my group, no. There was only one group, and that was them. So there they was. And then we find out someone come up. And the first thing you know, Solomon revealed the secret of their heart. I'd imagine the little queen said, now wait, just a minute. You see, my, that's on a drill. The next one come up, found the same thing. Oh, her little heart began to jump. She wondered. So she must have got a prayer card and waited. Excuse the expression, but you know, just make a point, see, she might have got a card and she waited. One day her card was called and she came up before the Holy Spirit that was working through Solomon and the Bible said there was nothing hid from Solomon. The great Holy Spirit revealed everything that she had need to hear. He revealed it. And here was the Holy Spirit, its fullness, in Jesus Christ doing the same thing and those Pharisees saying, show us a sign, heal this man out here. Do this and say this. And what will be this or that? See, they just don't understand. This little queen standing there, and the Bible said that nothing was held back from Solomon. He revealed all the things that she had need of knowing. He told her all about it. And when it did, she didn't have to take somebody else's word. She had watched it and she believed it. Then she turned to the audience and she said, All that I heard, when I heard it, I wondered, but all that I heard is so, and more than I heard is so, seeing it was her turn. She had seen it. It was her work on her. She knew it was real. And she said, Blessed be the Lord God who has made you his servant. Blessed be he. Who was it? The poor little woman had lived there, all those creeds and idols, and one time in her hungry heart, any real believer wants to see God in action. If he ever was God, he is still God. And she seen something that was real, not put on, genuine, real. She served God the rest of her days, and she seen something that was real. Oh, friend, 
we have seen so many join this creed this muslim this whatever it is come to this and this and that and the other and all kinds of sensations and things surely the world ought to be hungry tonight for something real see something that's genuine not some mythic bunch of flowing blood or scratches or oil or something that's not even scriptural but a real jesus christ who promised that he would live in his people in these last days and do the things that he did something that the scripture says will take place in these days all these little creeds well if you know our creed you know see you are looking back to what mr luther said or a great man of his day sure no more than some of these women here 75 years old trying to be 16 looking back and trying to dress like they're 16 cut off their hair and wear shorts and make anybody who drives looking back looking through a rear view mirror has a wreck and that's what's the matter with the church today it's looking through a rear view mirror to what it was no wonder it's wrecked up don't never fall seed press into the mark of the high calling i go forth i go forward I know Mr. Moody was a great man. Mr. Wesley was a great man. The Pentecost move, the Baptist move were great. But let's press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ. Don't look through a rear view mirror 40 years ago. Look what is tonight. Look what the scripture promises tonight. He did promise them in that day, but we're living on above there now. We are going on. What if Wesley would have looked back and seen what Luther said? But he didn't look what Luther said. He looked what God said. What if the Pentecostal looked back towards the Methodist? See, where it have been? There you are, the same thing. You organized and crumped it down. You can't move anywhere. Now the Spirit of God just moves right on out, takes it on somewhere else. Every time they do it, a man-made system where you get all worked up like that, it's again like the gain saying of Korah, how Destiny and them waited to get a big bunch of man and make an organization out there. God said, separate yourself, Moses, from them, and I'll swallow them right up in the earth. And that was the type of the journey today. And you know it, on the road to the promised land, and there they was, they couldn't believe that anointed message of God that was moving right on, so they wanted to start something themselves. It's always that way. Israel's most rash move they ever made when they rejected Greece in Exodus 19 and took the law. And Dathan made the awfulest mistake he ever made when he said, there is more leaders in here besides you, Moses. And he had been vindicated that he was God's manifested word. He had took dust and turned it into fleas and everything that he had said had come to pass. And God was with him. A pillar of fire had vindicated, hanging above him there. And still they wanted to see something else. That's just man-made. That's the way it is today. That's where the church has got. That's right. Oh, church of the living God, don't you want to see something real? Something real. A little story before praying for the sick. I like to hunt. My mother, you know, is um, her mother drawed the pension. She was a Cherokee Indian. And uh, my conversion never took it. The love of the woods. I love it. That's where you see God. That's where I first saw God. I was out there in the woods. There is where he meets us. There is where he does the talking. There is where those seven angels met. Did you? On SARS, what time is it? But the brothers and I were sitting there the other day when that stand came down a whirlwind out of the heavens, even tore the rocks out right above where I was standing there. And he said, See, and there, oh my, many man, brother Swarthman, in here somewhere on the terry, I believe over here, was present at that time. And things you see him in the wilderness out there. I love to hunt, I do that just to get out, not to kill the game, but just to be in the woods. I used to hunt with a fellow up in New York, up in New Hampshire, rather. He was a fine hunter. His name was Bart. He was an Englishman. And his parents established or cut that where they call Jefferson Notch through there and over to Carroll Notch and separated that in the early days. And there was a little Indian about him too. He was the best shots ever seen and one of the finest hunters. You never had to worry about going out and hunting 
him up, he knew where he was at. I used to love to hunt the white-tailed deer up there, and they had go up every fall and hunt. He was such a fine hunter, and but he was a cruelest man I ever met in my life. He had eyes like a lizard, and he just them kind, you know, like the woman tried to paint their eyes today, kind of like lizard-like. Well, he actually had that kind of eye, and it don't look like human to me. And so I, I always kind of hated to look at him. He was so slimy looking like that, you know. Look at them eyes sideways. And he loved to be mean. And he would shoot fawns. That's little baby dear, just to make me feel bad. And he would say, oh preacher, you're like the rest of them. You are chicken hearted. You would be a good hunter if you wasn't a preacher. I said I'm hunting souls, but, and I said, you got one that's lost, see? And he, ah, uh, get next to yourself, said Billy, you're right, but, said, don't talk that kind of stuff to me. So he'd shoot those little fawns, and that just makes me feel so bad. Now, it's all right to kill a fawn if the law says so. Now, the size or sex, just whatever his law says, I was a game warden for many years, but look, Abraham killed a calf and, and fed it to God. So there ain't nothing about killing a fawn, if the law said, but not just shoot them. Just let them lay there and act smart about it. That's wrong. That's wrong in doing it. So I just said that to justify my hunting brothers here. You see, so that you see what I'm trying to mean. Now notice this, that we find that this man one day, I went up there, wife and I were together, and... He had made him a little whistle that blowed and sound just like a little baby fawn crying, you know. A little funny blit they make. Well, as long I had been working and I hadn't got through in time in a meeting and I went up to hunt with him and there had been a lot of hunting going on and the first time a gun fires in that country, them white tail, you thought Houdini was an escape artist, he was an amateur to them. And the first thing you know, they would all hide. And if there's moonlight, they would graze at night or get under a brush pile or something and they wouldn't move. Then we see that day, I said, but you're not going to use that whistle. He said, oh, preacher, you're so chicken hearted. I said, get next to yourself. And we started out and we put some sandwiches in our shirt and we was uh, to hunt was going to hunt till about noon up around the rims of the top of the presidential range and then separate and come back down. If we got a deer, we know where it would be hanging. We would go pull it out in a day or two, hang it up. So there was about, oh, four inches of snow or six, something like that. It was good tracking time. And we started off, got along about up in the mountain, not a truck, there wasn't a thing there, moon shining at night and a deer. Bart was in front of me leading the way, and so I was walking along behind him, and he just kind of sat down like that. The snow was dry, and he started reaching back. I thought he was going to eat the sandwich, and we would just part from there, because we was way high in the mountain then. And he reached back here, and I started getting my sandwich, and I started finding a place to set my rifle down, and I started to get my sandwich, and I looked around. He brought this little whistle out that I thought, boy, that's a dirty trick to do that. So he took this little whistle and looked at me in them lizard eyes and looked up at me. He put that little whistle in his mouth like that, and I said, but you wouldn't do a thing like that, would you? He said, oh... And he blew like that. And to my surprise, about 50 yards from me, just across, a great big doe stood up. Now, the doe is a mother deer. And there she was, her big brown eyes, and them ears picked up. See, she heard. Now, she was a mother thing, and her baby was crying. And so, no matter whether the rest of them come out or not, there was something in her. She was a mother. So, but looked like that and he blew it again real low 
and that deer walked right out in the opening. Now that's unusual, very unusual. Walk out like that, and she was looking around with a big head up, and her eyes looking around. After a while, when the hunter reached up and got the gun, she seen the hunter, usually they'll just flash and gone. You know how it is quickly, but you know, she never moved. She just stood and looked at him broadside. I turned her head and looked. My, I thought, but you can't do that, see? She wasn't putting on something. She wasn't hypocritically. She wasn't acting. She was born in her. She was a mother. And that baby, I don't care if it cost her life. It was in trouble. She was trying to find that baby. It was in trouble. She was the instinct in her. She was mother, and she saw the hunter, but her mind wasn't about the hunter. It was about that baby in trouble, that little phone. And so he pulled the safety down on this 30 or 6. Oh, it was a dead shot. He leveled that rifle down. I just had to turn my head. I couldn't keep from it. I couldn't look at him. thought, just a couple more minutes and it'll blow her royal heart out. Trying to find her baby. It's in trouble. Knowing that hunter laying right there in the bush. And he would blow that royal heart plumb through with that 180 grain bullet in there. And I, he was such a dead shot, he leveled. I thought I just can't stand to look at it. I turned my back and I said, Lord, help him that he won't do that. I felt so sorry that poor mother standing there hunting for her, her baby. And I know she wasn't putting that on. She was a mother. She would have run any other time. She wouldn't have got up and us going by, but there was something in her, and I waited, and I waited, and the gun never went off. Well, I wondered, what's the matter? And I waited, and then I turned around real slow, and I seen the deer standing out there, still was looking at him, and I looked at the gun barrel, it was going like this. He just, he was trying to hold aim, and he couldn't do it. He threw the gun down on the ground, and looked around at me, and them big eyes had changed. The tears was running down his cheeks. He grabbed me by the trouser leg. He said, Billy, lead me to that Jesus you're talking about. What was it? He saw something real, seeing that little mother dear had to display a loyalty, a real loyalty that made that cruel hunter there that had the wickedest heart I ever seen. It wasn't a someone I preached. It was what he seen, something that was real. It wasn't a put on. It wasn't a sham. That was a genuine mother seeking for a baby. And that led him to Christ. He is a deacon in the church there now, a wonderful Christian, because he saw something that wasn't put on. It wasn't a make-believe. It was real. Oh, brother, sister, if this church, if these people tonight... If you and I, there is something real you want to put on, you might see some putting it on, but there is a genuine thing. There is something in a man that makes him live for God. There's a genuine Holy Spirit tonight, brother. That's not a put on. There is a genuine thing. And how many in here would like to be as much Christian and as loyal to Christ, death, persecution, anything else, you would love to be such a much Christian as that dear as a mother. Would you like, wouldn't you? like to be like that i would long to be a kind of a christian that even like that it little self-nation woman last night was that kind of a christian this little queen we're talking about tonight she was that kind of a christian when she saw something that was real she was ready god help us tonight to receive something real christ let us bow our heads just a moment while we pray now i wonder in the building tonight, if there is any here, while well, you're real quiet, if there is any here that would like and don't know Christ as your personal Savior, and you'd like to know him as your Savior, would you raise up your hand? One, two, three, God bless you. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. I wonder if there is some here tonight that's claimed to be a Christian, maybe a member of a fine church, of a great bunch of people, but yet you know down in your heart that you haven't got Christianity in your heart, born into it, just like that mother was. Dear was born to be a mother. She was mother through and through, and you'd like to become a real Christian, like that little mother. Dear was a mother. 
Would you raise your hand? Say, pray for me, Brother Branham. God bless you. God bless you all around. Up in the balconies, I see your hand, Heavenly Father. Little did I know on that cold November day, standing there, snow all down my neck, wet to see that man laying there, how I talked to him, held his hand, cried with him, and told him about the Bible and everything. And he said, oh, you're perhaps right. But to see, you have to send around something so real, that right in the way of nature that he just couldn't keep from seeing that there was something real and now he's your servant lord now there is many here tonight some of them raise your hands father that they never have been a christian and they want to become one god just don't let them be one of these just run and join church or take some form of creed or baptism but let it be born in their heart christ and those who have joined church, they, they are seeking, Lord, like perhaps the little woman, the little queen we have been talking about. She was hungering for something, and they are too, Lord. And when she seen something that was real, that identified God in human beings, she was ready then. And she said, blessed be the Lord God of Israel. She wanted no more to do with pagan forms. And Father, many here tonight, no doubt, is in that same state if they can just see something real and you told us when you are here in the world that what will take place in this day we are told that you are the same yesterday today and forever and we know how he was identified and how the pharisees failed to see it lord the same groups today are failing to see it by belonging to church joining having certain forms of creeds and so forth they fail to see the messiah the great Holy Spirit identifying himself with the people as you promised you would grant tonight, Lord, that each one of these will realize and will see your presence and may it come into their heart a text a greater than Solomon is here tonight, that Jesus Christ, the resurrected Son of God, ready to come and to convert and to make us new and to put them in them a born experience of God, just like that mother do something that she had nothing to do with by the grace of God she was chosen to be a dear she was chosen to be a mother and a loyal mother and you told us we were chosen before the foundation of the world I pray God that you let every one of those who has had that drawing in their heart like the little lady did to find God that tonight there will be something real happen that they'll see and serve him for greater than Solomon is here we ask it in Jesus name amen now, reverently, silently, just before we come to the altar, please, no one move around. Just be real, reverent a moment. There's a solemn hour, solemn moment. Decisions are being made. Many raise their hands. I believe you are deeply sincere in that when you said that. Now, you have heard about the Bible. You have heard about Jesus. You have heard about the Son of God. You have been taught that he's raised again, and you are taught that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, is this a Holy Spirit? that we talk about is that Jesus Christ sure it is him. he is God known as God the Holy Ghost it ain't another God it's the same God Father Son and Holy Ghost it is not three gods it's three attributes of the same God see just the same God in three forms you see in other ways three offices like you knew when he served as father and then a son it's God condescending coming from one who cannot be touched even to touch the mountain had to die Till we could handle him in flesh. And now he is in you. He sanctified you with his blood that he might live in you. At that day you'll know I am in the Father, the Father in me, I in you, and you in me, saying, It's God above us, God with us, God in us, saying, and thus Christ tonight, the Holy Spirit, He is the same, and you are. He is a vine and you are the branches, have faith in him, and if he will identify himself tonight being among us. Now, if he stood here with skull, that would be a human being that's flesh. Anybody can impersonate that. A human being can disfigure himself, or maybe we don't know what Jesus looked like. We just got the artist idea, the psychology of it. What he looked like, Hoffman had one kind, Salman another, and how many more? 
But how would you know him? It would be of his life. Because if a man stood here with thorn prints in his hand and whatever more, that would be an imposter. Because when Jesus himself comes, every eye shall see him, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess it, certainly. But his spirit is here, seeing. And if we can just let our minds drift into this, let the mind that was in Christ be new. He is the word, and the Bible said the word of God, which how many knows that Jesus was the word in the Bible, Hebrews 4, and the Bible said it's sharper than a two-edged sword, and a designer of the thoughts of the heart. Now, that's what was in Solomon, the word, God. The reason he could design their thought that was in Jesus, saying that's what is here now, same thing. Now you out there, I ain't going to call no prayer line because I'm going to make an altar call. There might be some here that's never been in one of the meetings. I don't see a person in the building that I know. Someone was telling me that I was about 30 last night or better called. Do you realize that one time a woman touched his garment and he turned around and the same thing taken place and the virtue went out of him. Him, the son of God, that he said, greater than this shall you do. I go to the Father. Now, you just believe and have faith. Each one of you all around here in this court stretches wherever you are, believe. Don't think you're hopeless. Now, if you could, I could heal you, I would do it. But I cannot heal you. I could lay hands upon you and I intend to do that to everyone having them cards. And they give out cards every day so i intend to do that but that is that just to signify that i believe with you but look why don't you just touch him the bible said he's a high priest right now that can be touched by the feeling of infirmities is that right well if he is a high priest then he would certainly act in the same way he did then would he not he certainly would act the same way he did then all right now you touch him by faith. Now, Heavenly Father, the meeting is yours, but I have taught tonight on this little woman seeing something real when she's seen that spirit of discernment upon Solomon. And we are sure, Lord, that your words are true. You said that will return again like it was in the day of Solomon, in the day of Sodom, just before the coming. And you were the same yesterday, today, and forever. The works that you did, we would do also. And you are a high priest tonight that can be touched by the feeling of infirmities. How much more do we need? How much did those Jews need to see that he was a prophet, a virgin conceived in all these things, but by their creeds, blinded them, Lord, there is some here, come like maybe not from Sheba, but they've come from many places. I pray, God, that you'll identify yourself tonight real and then identify yourself in them as the instinct of that mother and that little dear did that day. We are yours, Father. Speak through us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I want you to have faith and believe, each one of you, all around, everywhere, and just pray. Now don't. Just look and pray now and just believe. See, this might not, the Holy Spirit might not be pleased with doing this. If he doesn't, I'll call up a prayer line. But stand here. Somebody out there, even if you... I don't want you with the prayer cards, just anybody, just pray. Because I wouldn't know, but you just pray and see. Just say, Lord Jesus, I know that man don't know me. He knows nothing about me, but I know that I do believe. Your faith is unconscious. Don't press now or jump. You jump away from it. It's right with you. Just relax yourself and believe. Just believe now. Have faith about the prophet says, Amen. And be reverent. Just have faith. Just believe. Sometimes your faith is unconscious. You have it and you don't know it. The little woman had it. She didn't know it. How many of you has ever seen the picture of that angel of the Lord? That light, if it's taken right here in Texas, it's been taken over the world now. But what do you think, sir? Do you believe sitting right here at the corner? Look like you're looking so eagerly. You have many things wrong with you. You have complications. Many things. Now, when I said that, a real strange feeling come to you, didn't it? If that's right, raise up your hand. Now, I'm a total stranger to you. I don't know you. That's right. You know that. 
know what that flight just settled right down over you see that's what you felt kind of a real sweet feeling i was watching it see come right down now yes you are here you need to be prayed for before you leave the building if god will reveal to me what your trouble is and you sitting there and me here would you believe it to be god it's a hania one of your great things that's right if that's right if god will tell me who you are what your name is you've got a good contact with him now will you believe me to be his prophet or his servant excuse me that's a stumbling block to her lord see do you believe it your name is mr sturgeon if that's right raise up your hand do you believe it and be healed here is a little lady sitting right back there dark-headed right out here in the aisle yes you he was amazed when that was said now right at this time you begin to feel kind of strange see real sweet like something around you if anyone will look if you can see it kind of an amber looking light coming down upon the little lady now what her trouble is she has headaches that bothers her real bad that is right if that's right raise up your hand like that and i have never seen her in my life that's true that's right headaches bothers her like a migraine but they're going to leave you amen believe it now there there is a man sitting right next to you there and he's looking right at me so honestly and that light is moving right over towards him and the man is suffering trouble with his eyes but if you believe god will heal the eyes and make them well you believe all right i've never seen you in my life you are a stranger to me see that young fellow sitting right next to you there also he suffers his trouble with his head that's right that's right i've never seen the man in my life god knows that see all right you believe the man sitting right next to you with glasses on looking this way yes you are wearing glasses but that really isn't your trouble you got something wrong with your back that you are wanting to be prayed for if that's right with your hand all right that young fellow sitting right next to you there right next to you he has had all kinds of troubles that young man has yes sir with a red tie on you have had a lot of troubles in your family and things kind of your wife is a nervous type of a person and you're suffering some kind of a pressure in your head also that's thus saith the lord that is true that's right you just believe don't you doubt but you believe here is a woman sitting right back here don't you see that light move back there and settle right down here she's suffering with an eye trouble and her bladder oh she's going to miss it lord god help me her name is mrs chambers believe with all your heart mrs chambers raise up to your feet raise up so that the people see who you are i'm a stranger never seen her in my life yeah it's over now jesus christ makes you well now if that is in jesus christ this yesterday today, and forever where is he did he promise to do it all that believes it raise up your hand all right do you want to be a real christian you that raised your hand a while ago like that old mother dear was well the holy spirit is here and the anointing is all over us why don't you just make your way and come stand right here at the altar for just a minute if you're seeking god for salvation we will come here and just come here at this altar and stand here with me just a minute raise up that's it that's right god bless you anybody in the building anywhere you are at will you come that's right come right now you that wants to find christ you will never be no closer to him until you meet him he is here he is identified with something real you have joined church a lot of your church members now you have joined church but that's all you had you want to see something real if that isn't exactly what jesus christ identified himself to be look at this little child coming here crying the tears running down his little face no wonder they are tender they haven't been pulled through everything another one coming down the aisle another one in the back coming down little children when their dolls has passed theirs by won't you come come right up here now and stand around the altar you church members you people that wants to have an experience of christ in your heart wouldn't you come here if he knows your heart and you know you can't hide it won't you come right now and stand here just before we go further come here stand here for the prayer will you do it come sure 
stand for him you stand for him if you're ashamed of him now he'll be ashamed of you there remember he is here the scripture said this would happen and here he is identifying himself as being here if you're a church member and don't know christ as a real experience won't you come at this time now i'm not much to persuade people only thing i can say is tell you the truth and if christ's presence plus his word being made manifest up in the balcony you that raise your hands sister brother if you want to come down we're going to wait right here come right on down and gather around the altar just for out of prayer let the world know let jesus know that you are not ashamed you want to be a real christian won't you come while we are just waiting a moment or two church member look on backslider won't you come stand along with them now come here and stand along you who haven't if you haven't got an experience with god that you are born in the kingdom of god like that what more do you want to see remember i tell you in the name of the lord if you regard me to be his servant this is the last sign that the church will see according to the scripture that was the last thing that abraham seen done before the promised son arrived and the we are the royal seed of abraham and Jesus promised the royal seed to be see the same thing that Abraham seen just before the gentle world burned. Don't put off for something else. Satan trying to get you to look over. Come now, well, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. When sinners plunged beneath the flood, lose all their guilty sting the dying thief rejoice to see that fountain in his day there may i though well as he wash all my sins away won't you come and accept it now i'm waiting just a moment somebody else might come and stand here for prayer and i'm going to ask ministers here brethren come down and stand with me around while you pray and ministers out there who is concerned and some of these people in your neighborhood that would come to your church or something that you are interested in their souls coming to christ and you believe this to be just christ but remember i am not just christ i'm your brother a sinner saved by grace i am like you are but it's jesus christ the holy spirit that's here with us keeping his word he don't have to do this but he promised he would do this just didn't have to heal the sick but the bible said he did it that he may be fulfilled which was promised of him now we don't care what brand of church that you belong to if you believe that jesus christ is present you believe that there is a born again experience of the baptism of the holy spirit ministers move right up in among these people here come right up among them laying our hands on them while going to offer prayer for them i'm asking a congregation to be just as reverent as you can be for a few moments how do we know what the holy spirit will do that's right that's it move right in mingle yourself right with the people come right around them each one now remember there is only one thing you can do is accept what he has promised you have you seen the reality of the resurrection of christ and i'm going to ask you the congregation if they will stand just a minute in reverence and respect to them each one of you believe now confess all that you've done that's all you can do and then ask god to forgive you and accept it believe it now let everyone pray in your own way our heavenly father we come to you with penitent souls how little story about that mother dear struck down deep that people wanted to do something or see something real like the queen of the south who came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of solomon and a greater than solomon is here the savior of mankind jesus christ of nazareth save them father forgive their sins wash your souls in the blood of the lamb and give them an experience of being born a christian no other animal no nothing else could have done that but the mother dear that's what she was he gave us an experience lord now of a born again experience in the kingdom of god where the holy spirit is here grant it lord grant it lord now close your eyes raise up your hands and say make a confession saying jesus i now believe 
take me as I am. There is no more I can do. Heal my sick body. Take me, Lord. I believe you are here. The Holy Spirit is here identifying itself. Save me by thy grace, Lord. It's all I know how to do. Through Jesus Christ's name, Brother Grant, will you lead us in prayer?